Okay, I have another good question and answer. I'm Ed Frawley. My wife and I own Learburg. This question came in through the Ask Cindy portal on our website. People don't have to be customers of Learburg to ask a question on training or puppies or breeding or medical issues. If we can't answer them, we will. But this is a question that came in on a person that has a five-month-old uh, puppy that she was concerned about the puppy's reaction when she made the dog get off of furniture. And I think it's best, I'll answer it. First, I'll read you what she said, and then I'll tell you how we handle this at our house because we always have dogs at our house. She said, I have a five-month-old Malinois mix as a house pet. I want a calm, submissive dog in my home. Isn't that what everybody wants? And it doesn't just magically happen. To get a calm, submissive dog, and especially a puppy to do this, takes a lot, a lot, a lot of work and time. And we'll talk about it in a second. I used your streaming service to build engagement in the dog. We have an uh, online course and a video on how to build engagement in your dog. She loves the games. She waits patiently at all the doors. She makes eye contact. She's crate trained and has, has learned the place command. And for those that don't know what the place command is, is we have, um, you can use a dog bed. We have these raised platforms that we call place boards. We offer, the, we offer them, <laughs> our, our video camera's actually sitting on one, two, three, four, a stack of five of them behind the camera. But we teach our dogs to go to place. That means go lay down on your place bed or in your spot and stay there. So she said, I also had her, I also had let her jump on furniture at her own discretion, which is not a good idea, but she figured it out here. She said, I watched your video on building pack structure and I've decided that I will only let her on the couch if I invite her up. One day she jumped up on the couch and on me and I told her off and pushed her off the couch. She sat there on her place spot, but she stared at me in a way that seemed, I'm not entirely buying into this idea that you're the pack leader. <laughs> Probably not. Not at five minutes or five months, not when you just started. It wasn't the kind of eye contact she gives in engagement games where she's trying to say, teach me something. I want to learn. So we had a long staring contest. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't say or do anything while I was staring back and she was staring at me. But she kept staring and then she laid down and went to sleep. At these times, should I get into a staring contest with her, or should I look away and ignore her? You know, it's a good question. If you're not a dog trainer and you haven't had a dog before, uh, you want to do everything right, and I think this is a legitimate question. But Cindy has good, <laughs> Cindy has good points here, and that is a five-month-old dog that's staring at you is not staring because of some issue with dominance. That dog is a puppy. There's no way. When people say they have dominant dogs, I, I always say, you know, I just did a, a long online course on dealing with dominant and aggressive dogs. And in it, I talk about probably 99% of the dogs out there that people have that think their dominant dogs are not dominant. They can be reactive dogs, but just because a dog is reactive, a dog that growls, a dog that barks, a dog that wants to be, act aggressive towards people that come in the house, that doesn't mean they're dominant dogs. But a five-month-old dog is not a dominant dog. So this dog may be looking at her, staring at her, trying to figure out what's going on here. What we do in that situation is, could be we go back and put the dog on leash, put it in, the, in, the, uh, in her place, and we make her lay there, and we ignore her. We go on, we read her book, 
Uh, we work on the computer. I don't care if the dog's staring at, at me. Obviously, the dog's going to get tired of it and lay down and go to sleep like this dog did. But the way, in my opinion, to establish leadership, you know, the old story of being pack leader, some people say that's going down the, going down the road. You still have to be the leader of your dog. If you don't want to call yourself a pack leader, there needs to be some respect and the dog needs to understand that at some point in time, the dog needs to understand that when I ask him to do something, he has to do it. And he may not like it because he'd rather be outside and running around chasing squirrels, but if I tell him to lay there, he's got to lay there. But I'm not going to sit there and have a staring contest and you will lay there and lay there and lay there until I quit looking at you. That's not necessary. Just ignore the dog. And <laughs> as long as the dog's doing what you want, act aloof, like, I don't care. As long as you're doing what I'm telling you to do, that's fine with me. I've got other things that I gotta do and I expect you to stay there. And if they don't, then you take them and depends upon where you are in your training process. I mean, if the dog gets up and doesn't stay there, it should be on leash. Uh, if the dog gets up and starts to wander around and it's on leash, well, then the dog bed can be over by the wall or by a piece of heavy furniture and it can be tethered to that furniture so that it can't get up and go around. And there's a lot to be said about dogs on furniture. It's okay for a dog to get up on the couch if I invite them up on the couch. But when it comes time that I don't want it anymore, I tell them to get down. And they have to get down. And if they give you any lip, too bad. No more couch, coach time, couch time for a while. I'm going to put a leash on you, and you're going to go over there, and you're going to lay over there, like it or not, without a bone, without a toy. You can lay there and think of, the, of what you just did. So I hope that answers the questions. The bottom line is, is when the dog is over there being relaxed, it takes a long time to teach a young dog to be calm and relaxed in the house. It could take a couple of years and it takes hundreds and hundreds of hours of being around you in the house and you teaching them how they, you expect them to act. Keep them on a leash. If they're too wild, put them on their place bed. If, the, if they're not trained to the place bed yet and you don't know how to do it, get one of our online courses that teach you how to do it. It's not difficult to do. If they're not trained to a place bed, then put them in their dog crate. Put them in an X-Pen if they're trained to an X-Pen. And we teach you how to do that too. So, in closing, if you do have a question on training, this was a good question, kind of basic. If you have a question on training, go to the Ask Cindy at the front of Libra.com. And again, it can be on training, it can be on health issues, it can be on breeding issues. I bred German Shepherds for police work and, and sport work for 35 years. I haven't done it now in, oh, it's 15 years ago. So if you do have a question, write Cindy. We're not going to put every question on YouTube. We have a database with over 3,500 good questions that we put in a database that's searchable. So you would, I would recommend you search there first to look for answers to questions that you have.